Hello everyone, my name is Jerry Bear and welcome back to Pokemon Scarlet. So we are headed to another Starfire. Starfall. Team Star Base. That's what they're called. Operation Starfall. And it's a fire base. East Province Area 1. This is a new area, right? So I get to catch this shopper? Yeah, I think so. You're coming with me, buddy. I had to think if I had one or not already, but I don't think I do. Oh, that was easy. I like that the Pokeball is levitating. And still levitating. It loves to feed on feelings like envy and malice. Its upright horn catches the emotions of people. Hmm. So he's going to be emo damage. Where's our target again? I'm excited to see what Pokemon I could have gotten in this area. Uh, those are birds. More birds. Oh, I guess I can't just dive bomb into their base. That's frowned upon here. Ah, it's you here, bro. Ah, uh, Director Clavel. Like I said before, name's Clav. Please don't forget it. Anyway, yeah, bro. I owe you one. Thanks to you, I've been accepted into Operation Starfall. Why did you join? I need answers, that's all. How do I resolve this situation with Team Star? And what's causing its members' odd behavior? I think that's just how they are. Team Star is the subject of more than a few nasty rumors swirling around the Academy, you know. Some say their bullying has caused a worrying number of students to drop out of school. Others say they're holed up in their bases, plotting to cause trouble for the academy. But these are rumors. The matter I am directly confronted with is something else. I'm talking about Team Star's persistent truancy. They've all been skipping class for a while now. First of five of them in particular, the so-called bosses of Team Star, haven't so much as set foot inside a classroom for over a year. And it seems the team's rank and file have recently started stirring up mischief as well. That's why I took it upon myself to issue a direct order to Team Star to disband. I informed them that th should they refuse, I would have no choice but to expel all students affiliated with their team. I feel like that would have been implied. But I'm afraid there's been no response. A deadline I set for them to make their choice between disillusion or expulsion is nigh upon us. Man, if you can expel them all from school, it's almost like you're high up at the school. Uh, so you see, when I overheard you talking on the phone to Cassiopeia, it couldn't have come at a more crucial time. It's Cassiopeia. Can you hear me? Urk. Whisper, whisper. 
Another time, then. Whisper, whisper. Be careful. Is he whispering that, or is he whispering something else? I see you're coming up to one of Teamster's bases. Uh, was there someone with you just now? It's just me. Well, be warned that Team Star will have its guard up after losing one boss to you already. The base won't go down as easily as the last one. Proceed with extreme to caution. I'll be in touch. Alright, let's take these people out. I just want to make sure that the, um... Big Pig is the right option for this. Ah, he knows Dig. Maybe my snake or... I think I'm gonna make Metal Gear the head lead Pokemon. Right now I have a lot of three Pokemon that can do like ground kind of moves. Whoa, whoa. You can't be here. This base belongs to Team Star. If you don't clear out real quick, I'll have to come at you in self-defense. You get me? Well, Alright, time for me to self-defense the snot right out of you. I guess this is technically self-defense for them. He's not wrong. Huh. Alright, so Rock Tomb. Uh, Bulldoze is more accurate. Oh, there's just the one Pokemon. I defended myself, all right, but it wasn't enough. Prize money. Man, you're crazy strong. Wait, are you the kid that oops Clear War on Team Star? Call me Yagabra. Whoa, thanks for the terrible news. Excuse me while I book it back to the rest of my crew. Hasta la vista. God, I Hey, Jägerbra. Why did he run off and come back? Cassiopeia told me to scope out the fire crew's base. Thought I'd come give you some backup now that I'm through. But it seems you're all set. Fufum. That can't be good. What? Aw. Fufum. It's adorable. Is that you, Charlos? Foo. I thought so. What are you doing here? Know this little fella? This is Carlos, the shark adept. He's one of the Pokemon the Academy takes care of within its grounds. Ah, Carlos, wait! He ran off. Looks like he may have some connection to Team Star's fire crew. Better chase after him. Don't worry, I'll regroup with you soon enough. You press ahead into the base, Jacob. All right, I'm curious what this challenge is gonna be. Right, top, top, top. I see you dealt with the grunt standing guard. Nice work. Station inside that base is Team Star's fire crew, the Skadar Squad. Their boss, Mila, is the best all-rounder of the team. She fixes any and every problem thrown her way, though her methods are heavy-handed. Our declaration of war must have made her blood boil. I bet even now, her grunts are hard at work inside the base, trying to keep her fury under control. That means your best move is to take down all the grunts nice and quick. I 
Once there's no one left to help Mila, keep her cool. She should come out to confront you. Ring the bell on the gates once you're ready to kick off this phase of the operation. Time to wipe the Skeeter squad off the map. What the fuck is a Skeeter? I just think of Doug. Alright, so... Okay, change position. I'm guessing... Oops. I'm guessing I want these three. I'm assuming it's going to be the exact same as before. Alright, let's head on in. I like that this bell is hooked up to something electrical. Seems unnecessary. The curse. Some kid lucked out beating one of our sister squads. Now he thinks he can take us on. Time to give him the boot, gang. Let's show this gate crasher what Team Star can do. If you're listening, Gate Crusher, know this. Unless you can beat 30 of our Pokemon in 10 minutes, our boss won't lift a finger to deal with the likes of you. Beat 30 Pokemon. It's a shame that my right um, button doesn't really work that great. I like how many Team Star members they are, and how much they get into this. Alright. Six mo five more. So one more. Our defenses are breached. It's all up to the boss now. of fire crew, Mila. So you're the dope who picked a fight with Team Star? I don't know why you do something so stupid, and I don't care. You challenged us, so we'll beat you down. That's all there is to it. Prepare to get messed up. Challenged by Mela, Team Star. Alright, and she's got a Torkoal. Right here, right now, you're going down. Are they all gonna have like one of these cars? Uh, I think ground? I never know. I can never remember the difference between ground and rock. This move will torch you till there ain't nothing but ash left. That was for the rest of the Skeeter squad. Maybe Terrorcelize? Get my stats up, I think. I assume. I 
hate the little lame planet on his head. But it worked. I ain't burned to a crisp yet. Uh, yeah, no, just her car, her Skeeter Starmobile. Bulldogs. Especially considering he's only level 26. So if I heal up... If I heal up, I should be able to do enough damage next turn. Even if he hit attacks me, I should be able to attack the next turn and take him out. I guess you can burn a snake. I was still thinking about being rock. I was like, you can't burn a rock. Metal Gear avoided it. Is this really how it's going to end? What a hassle. How's it going to give me some backstory into her? About a year ago. Man, what a hassle. Pulled it off just in time. Welcome back, Melly. Managed to get a bunch of char cadet to evolve. That ought to be enough to power the Starmobile. Finally get that hunk of metal rolling. Glad tidings indeed. Is it not so, Ortega? I'm just surprised she's not all hot air. Oh, shut it with the snide comments. You'd be such an annoying twerp, you know that? As if you're any better, Mela. Being rude and saying mean things is literally your whole deal. It's not true, Orti. The girls at the Academy have always been jealous of how cute Melly is. She just puts on a surly attitude so they'll stop picking on her. Although I guess you're not wrong to say that her surly attitude is what people know her for. What? Come on. Not you too, Eerie. How about we leave it at that, folks? It's almost time for the big event. Yes, Operation Star is finally happening. the big boss what prey is their plan <laughs> they already got in touch with all the bullies and asked them to head over to the schoolyard it's finally time huh man i'm so stoked thrills burning me right up all right i burned through everything i had now i've sputtered out guess this is where it ends that silly cobra of yours really let us have it oh that's a funny way to walk Beating me in a battle is a huge deal, so here, take this star badge and be proud of yourself. Cool. Ow, she's breaking my hand. While I'm at it, you can have this TM too. Not like I'm gonna use it. Flame charge. Neat. You put it in your bag's pocket. Let me make one thing clear. I'm not giving these to you. I'm giving them to your silly cobra. Stomp, stomp. 
You got what you came for. Now leave me alone. You're Mela from Team Star, right? There's a Pokemon I'd like you to see. Huh? Who are you supposed to be? Phew! A Charcadet. Wait. Phew, phew! Uh, well, if it ain't Charlos, what are you doing here? Seems he came to this base looking for you. Phew! You did? He's very attached to you, isn't he? Yeah, because I used to play with him every day, back when I was still going to school. You can even tell more or less what he's thinking just by looking at the way his flames move. Have any, any idea why Carlos wanted to visit you? Charlos, to me, it looks like he's saying that he wants you to come back. They say. Team Star has holed itself up in these bases to plot something against the Academy. Are you aware of this? First I've heard of a stupid rumor like that. Man, nothing's changed since back then. Everyone's still spouting garbage. Then what about the modified car you were motoring around in just now? The Starmobile? We made that thing a long time ago to help us with a big fight. But we never actually used it against anyone before you two came looking for trouble. You never used it before? And what's this about a big fight? You ever heard of Operation Star? Not Operation Starfall? No, this is the first time hearing of it. Huh, well, yeah, I guess you wouldn't know. But for me and the rest of Team Star, it's a memory we'll always treasure. Success. Right? I think these five colors are all the five leaders' colors. Gerber, it's me. I'll tell you that Mela's star badge is now in your possession. I see. Now that there's no boss to lead them, the rest of the squad shouldn't last long. Mela. Sorry, I got distracted for a second there again. Now about your reward, transfer from LP to your phone as promised. Hmm, that's not much. You now make more TMs. Use those TMs to strengthen your Pokemon. Have my supply unit rep meet you with bonus materials. Hello, it's me again from the supply unit. Ah, uh, yes. What? What the heck? Hey, stop that! S somebody help! Poor Penny. It drooled all over me. What even is that Pokemon anyway? I have no idea. Huh? I amazed you're so calm with a giant question mark of a Pokemon at your side. Um, but before I forget, here's your reward. You received lots of materials. Um, your name's Yerba, right? Since you're part of Starfall's Battle, Operation Starfall's Battle Unit, can I ask you something? What do you think of Team Star? Neither of these are what I would think, but they're not all that. Interesting. You know, some of the rumors say Team Star wasn't always a bunch of delinquents. Most of them used to be victims of bullying, or they just found it hard to interact with people. Then these misfits and outsiders found each other and banded together to form Team Star. All they want to do is push back against the bullies they couldn't face alone. They unionized. But uh, that's just info I got by hacking other students' social media accounts. Tell me more about that. I also found talk about some secret mastermind behind the five bosses. Someone who recruited them to the team in the first place. Hmm. 
I don't know they taught this much, and now my throat kind of hurts. So good luck with taking down the other bases and stuff. Thanks, Benny. Alright, let's take some classes. Um, I guess... We'll do language two. We'll get them all up to level three, and then... Maybe end this. See how the time is. My dear friends, how are you all today? Feeling absolutely fantastic, I hope. It's time for Salvatore's language lesson. Itez vus pretz. Are you ready, everyone? Yeah, I'm gonna say I didn't say that right. You can answer with yes or we. We. Se chess. Super. In our last class, I believe I taught you all how to say thank you in other languages, right? In le course de a journal today's class that's long to say today's class we will learn about a certain word sure to make people happy when you use it in your travels abroad what word you ask well you have to guess delixiox ha choi bueno can anyone tell me what these words mean delicious wow correct say super i knew i could count on you here bro Delicious, hachi, bueno, buono. I don't know. All these words mean delicious. Using the local word for delicious at markets or restaurants is sure to get a big sourire, a smile. I wish I knew what languages these were, and for him to actually pronounce them. That is from whoever you're talking to. It'll make communication go more smoothly. I guarantee it. Yeah, after I fumbled my way through an entire restaurant. People love it when someone says the queen of their homeland is delicious. Who wouldn't be Curex happy to receive such a compliment? And now, a propos of nothing, let me give you all one of my wise words of advice. First step to smooth communication is to compliment the person you're talking to. After all, it's not very likely that a compliment would put someone in a bad mood. This doesn't only apply to people in other regions, either. It's the same for all of you, too. You can put this tip to use with your classmates. How about you all try complimenting each other after class? I bet it will make for an ambiance plus sympathy, a more friendly atmosphere. That's all for today. See you all a whole chain course next lesson. That is, adios, matane. I don't think this is how people are intended to learn a language. They're reading some mix of it with English. All right, art. I'm interested in art with Mr. Hassel. Because I'm curious what questions they can ask. Greetings, I am Hassel. I'll be teaching this art class. It's a pleasure to meet you all. Now, let me be candid for one moment. I imagine that many of you will forget all that you learned in this class once you graduate. After all, you don't e need even a basic understanding of artwork, much less a refined appreciation of beauty for most exams or jobs. Man, I don't know if I could paint any of those in the background that well. So is my class a waste of time for you then? I think not. At least I certainly hope it isn't. Look at these two kids in the back. That age gap. Think for a moment, all of you. What is beauty anyway? What makes something beautiful? The eye of the beholder? I mean, that's the canned answer. Interesting. Thank you, Yerimur. Yeah, like, that kid in the back has a beard, and there's like a toddler beside him. Oh, I don't mean to suggest that there's a correct answer to my query. The important thing is that you all take time to think about it. 
Think about why we might find beauty in a flower blooming on the side of the road, for example. Question why the sky is a different shade of blue than the ocean, or why the leaves change color. Ponder the windmills of Artisan and how they move. Contemplate the chilling bite of the waters of Cascarafa. I'm sure you'll find that every little detail of your lives will seem more vivid, more impactful. If you just take a moment to stop and think. I am certain that if you stop and truly appreciate the little beauties of this world, it will help pull you through the days where your studies have you exhausted or when work has dampened your spirits. Ah, do pardon me for waxing philosophical. You don't need to understand all of that for me. Oh. To put it simply, it is true that one doesn't need to art to survive, but it certainly makes surviving much more enjoyable. It is my hope that this class will add even a little bit of color to your lives. That's all for today. This time we'll try a more hands-on approach to appreciating beauty. I don't know if I got that question correct or not. I guess any of those are would have been valid answers. Let's try it again. I'm curious if there's any benefit to doing all these. Hello class, it is I, Hassel, yet again. In our previous class, we discussed what beauty is, which might have been a little boring for you. Allow me to introduce our special guest. Is it a Pokemon? Oh! Gibble. This is Professor Gibble, the assistant lecturer for today. Now then, Professor Gibble, if you would be so kind as to terrestrialize for us. Blam! Some of you may already know, a Pokemon can terrestrialize if you use a Terra Orb. Normally, it would be a Dragon type, but by terrestrializing, it's to see it into changing its type. So, class, what type do these lovely, glistening flowers above Professor Gibble's head represent? Grass type. Excellent, Yagra. Yeah, Full marks for you. The beautiful flowers blooming above Professor Gibble's head show that it has now become a grass type. The shape of the Terra Jewel above a Pokemon's head depends on the Pokemon's Terra type. To summarize, if an opponent's Pokemon terrestrializes during battle, observes their Terra Jewel closely to see which type it has become, and choose effective moves accordingly. It's my sincere hope that today's lecture will help you all achieve beautiful victories. The Terra Stole phenomenon is indeed a fascinating and deep subject to discuss. That's it for today. Thank you for coming. Glam Gib. All right. Let's keep going. All right. So next we have a home ec class. Like home ec with Mr. Seguro? Yep. I 
I see we have some, oh God. he is something so we have some energetic young ones in our class this time around you may call me mr. Saguaro many of you have left the care of your parents to live here on your own in the Academy dormitory oh, and he's got some hair and a ponytail Pray that the knowledge I impart to you will improve the quality of your lives, the necessities thereof, food, clothing, shelter. Of those three categories, I assume the most pressing and interesting for you all is food. When you eat sandwiches on your picnics, the HP of your party Pokemon will be restored. I also gain something called meal powers, which can provide all manners of benefits. Sample these powers to make Pokemon easier to catch, or increase the experience points that your Pokemon receives. I should do the catching one before I go into new regions. I think you also find that the breadth of these effects can be expanded by crafting sandwiches. Of superb flavor. What's more, there's a certain something that is particularly important for which to receive meal powers of even more helpful effects. Let me see, Master Yara. Tell me, what must you keep in mind to receive even more helpful po meal powers? Ah. I mean, the choice of fillings and condiments, I think. I think that's literally what it does. Perfectly correct. Perhaps you were already aware of this fact from having helped your family with cooking at home. Your choice of ingredients, including both filling and condiments, is an important factor in gaining even more helpful meal powers. For example, using sweet ingredients may help you gain egg power. Learning to aim for specific effects when crafting will almost certainly make your culinary endeavors more enjoyable. Please be aware, however, that you can also receive meal powers by eating at restaurants. Alright, easy class. All learned here much in my class and came to better understand home economics. Time together has come to an end for today. I bid you all farewell. Alright, I think we just need one more home ec class and then we're all we're up to level 3 for all of them. Can't wait to see him again. There you go. The way your phone is time for class to begin. In our last class, I believe we talked about the effects you can get from food on your picnics. You will receive meal powers and even restore HP for all the Pokemon in your party. It is truly a convenient means of healing your Pokemon. Sometimes I feel like I click the button, but he doesn't progress. They don't progress their words. Fortunately, as I'm sure you are aware, it's not suited for use in battles. Oops. 
when you cannot make food or when you wish to restore HP quickly. In times such as those, you should make use of healing items such as potions, which you can purchase from Pokemon or the school supply. Healing items are immediate are immediately effective and can be used anytime that you can open your bag. They are, however, consumed after one use. Potions restore 20, super 60, hyper 120. The pricier the item, the more HP it will restore. Keep in mind how much money you have when you're stocking up on these items. However, unforeseen happenings are an inextricable part of traveling from place to place. Imagine, if you will, the following scenario. You find yourself with injured Pokemon, but you have no potions, you're out of sandwich ingredients, and there are no Pokemon centers nearby. Tell me, Master Yerba, what should you search for when in a perilous situation with no way to heal your Pokemon? Items on the ground? A Taichar? Perfectly correct. I see you are well learned in survival techniques. If you see something shiny on the ground, it's actually an item that has been dropped there. You may be able to find a restorative item, such as an orange berry or a potion in this way. You can use the R button to send out your Pokemon to pick up such items as well. There are Then there are berries, of course. Berries, by the way, aren't like items from shops. If you let your Pokemon hold one, it will decide on its own when to eat the berry during battle. Letting your Pokemon decide this timing for itself can be quite interesting. At any rate, if you find yourself in need of healing, I suggest that you look around for shining items on the ground. Ah, but I see the bell demands that topic wait. Our time together has come to an end for today. Bid you all farewell. Hmm. I like his like, apron or whatever it is. Got jiggly puff on it. But, like he said, I think we'll end this here. So we got all of these up to level 3. So, thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this episode of Pokemon Scarlet. Next time, I don't know what the next challenge, next gym is that we're be heading towards, but I'm, I guess probably a gym. Here, we'll see what it is. It is going to be, um, was this one a fairy type? Uh, oh, it's Iono? Oh, she's electric. Doot, 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 doot. Yeah, so we'll be heading there from the last, that fire gym that we were at last. Not gym, but I'm going to call them all gyms. The Team Starbase. So thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. As always, see you in the next episode. Bye-bye.